All right, guys, we're at the spot right now getting ready to get painting. We got the wall all buffed out, so we got the wall. I got a sketch, got a can of color place, and this is transparent as it gets. But I got a Boston fat on it and my respirator, because you're definitely going to need your respirator when using color plates. So let's go ahead and mask up and get painting real quick here. Whew. All right, guys. This stuff is just as stinky as I remember it, so make sure you wear a mask when using it. Now, um, a couple thoughts. The Boston outline definitely makes this a much cleaner can. Although the paint in the can is significantly more watery than when I used to use it back in the day. They've definitely thinned the formula. It does serve a purpose, outlining your pieces. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move in a little bit closer to the wall so I can show you guys some details of the letters because some of you were wondering about overlapping and doing the different things like that. This will be a basic step in that direction. So I'll show you exactly what I did in just a second. Let me get over here real quick. Anyways, let's talk a little bit about interlocking letters. You wanna get better at doing lettering. Don't write the same name every time. I mean, you can have your graffiti name or you could be whoever you wanna be. That doesn't matter. That's you. But I'm just saying if you wanna get better, it's important to try to do different words. That's why I try to write different names all the time. It just helps keep me on my toes, helps me try different stuff, helps get me out of my comfort zone, which I think you should do too. Now, if you wanna do some really good interlocking, it's important to find letters that have contrasting lines. You feel me? For example, this M has a lot of vertical lines, lines going down like this. You see what I'm saying? But the E has horizontal lines, lines going this direction. So what you can do is utilize those two contrasting shapes to create something that interlocks with each other. So now I have the M coming down with the E wrapping around like that. This is just an idea. You can do whatever you want, but it's just something to consider when you're trying to make letter forms that blend together well. Interlocking shapes are very good. See how this part of the M is coming down like this. This is a very strong vertical piece. So you want this to be the primary part of the of the of the uh, of the interlock. You know what I'm saying? This is very strong. So you don't want the bottom part of the E to overlap the bottom part of this M because you want this to kind of stick out a little bit. You feel me? So have your interlock up here where it's like a weak part of the E and then it overlaps the M and doesn't affect it too much. So then you have this nice strong piece coming out. Again, you can do whatever you want. There's no rules to this whatsoever. I'm just giving some suggestions. Same thing where this is gonna connect right here. This is gonna go over the, that part of the E, but it's gonna go under that part of the M. That way this nice strong piece will stick out much more prominently. You feel me? Anyways, why don't we go ahead and go to the fill-in portion of this and get cracking. Hello, beautiful. These are the three shades that I'm gonna be using to make my fill. I have Cacao 77 Green, Universe's Green. I have, um, Reels Sublime, and I have Crazy Grass. That's Molotov, Iron Lac, and the Flame Orange. These are all great greens, all three of them. You will love each and every one of them. So I thought it would be great to combine them together. That way you can see how they work. Pro tip, they do work great together. This is what I love about what we're doing now. I have choice. Now I can try all everything. It's awesome. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get filling. The bottom part will be the Cacao 77 universes. Seriously, stop what you're doing right now and get this color. It's seriously one of the best greens. Uh, the Sublime, I'm sure a lot of you guys know about the Sublime. Awesome shade. Ditto. And uh, the Crazy Green, which... <laughs> the Crazy Green, which is an awesome shade too. Um, great bang for the buck. I love the Flame Oranges. Magnifique. This color just covers so nicely. Very even coverage. Nice shade too. Why don't we go ahead and get cracking with the uh, Reels Sublime and do the rest of our fill. All 
All right, dope. Why don't we switch over to the crazy grass? See what that's all about. I can tell you right now that I already like it. All right, guys, we're at the step now. We're gonna start putting some effects into our fill. I'm gonna be using some sugar paint. This is an alcohol solvent based paint. So it's very low VOC. Uh, pretty much all the paints we sell are very low VOC anyways. Nevertheless, this is even more low VOC. You probably don't really need to wear a respirator, although I would, you know, for paint particulates, put on a dust mask if you would like. It's up to you. I got this buff mask, Christmas present for my wife. She knows what I like. So I'm gonna go ahead and start using it, see what it's all about. From what I've heard, I haven't used it yet, that you really, really, really need to shake it and you really need to keep shaking it as you use it. It's just a, it's just an aspect of this type of paint. But I've done some test lines, I've done some spraying in my office and, and it really doesn't smell. So that's really cool. The color palette's really nice too. So why don't we go ahead, take this level one and do some little line work in the middle. My first thoughts on the sugar is it's it's probably not a cold weather paint and it's probably kind of impossible to do with the alcohol based product but it's very smooth it comes out very smooth and for a metallic it wasn't as drippy as I thought it would be and it's got a nice metallic sheen at least this particular color has my only complaint with the with the sugar so far at least for me and this is purely a personal preference thing is I feel like the valve has a lot of travel to it. It's very progressive, mind you, so you can you can get a little, as you go down, it, it does spray fatter, which is very nice. But it's, it's a pretty long travel, which I'll probably get used to after using it a few times. It's just, it's just I noticed it when I'm painting with it. For example, the, the valve on the gold, which I think is probably one of the best valves on the market, is extremely precise. So it's, and again, this is a very uh, subjective thing. It might just be my feelings on the matter, but it just seems to me that the travel's pretty far. Nevertheless, it's, it's quite good. It, it's, it covers nice, it feels good in the hand, and it really has no odor to speak of. So why don't we go ahead and continue on. I got some fern green in Montana gold. Start doing some bubbles. All right, dope, so we got our effects in. I think now we're gonna go ahead and start doing our outline. I got some Rourke Black with a level one cap. It's a pretty nice combo. So why don't we get cracking? Hey, let me show you guys a little tip really quick. So if you want your through lines to be cleaner, what I do is I actually just paint them all the way through and then when I have my lines done, I just buff them out. That way you have your overlapping part and this connects together much better. Feel what I'm saying? I'll cover it again in another video. But it just happened to pop up just now as I was doing this. All right, let's get back to filling. So we went ahead and got our outline done. Let's start putting our splash in, and then we'll do some cleanup work, and then we'll do our shines, and then we'll be done. All right, for the splash, I'm gonna be using terracotta gray in the flame blue. And it's kind of like a, like a really ugly taupe color, I guess. It basically looks like the Amerim Amerimut meme color. Just awesome. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and use that for my splash. All right, let's get cracking. All right guys, here's the next step. We're gonna be doing the cleanup process of this and uh, I wanted to touch base on a few little things here. We had to cut out yesterday, it got super cold. The, mind, the heart is willing, but the body just couldn't take it. First of all, when you're doing your cleanup, uh, don't worry too much about cleaning up the areas where your shines are gonna be. For example, right here, I got a little bit of a bleed over on the line there. It's not quite as sharp as I'd like it to be. I could come back 
with the Cacao 77 and clean that up. But I'm gonna end up putting a white shine there anyways, so don't even bother cleaning that up. So keep in mind when you're doing cleanup work, wherever your shine's gonna go, you're probably gonna go over it anyways. Also, anywhere where you might have made any adjustments on your outline, like for example here, I wanted this to be a little bit bigger than it was initially, so you see a bit of a gap there. So I'm gonna use this uh, Fern Green to cut back and fill in that area. Also, I need to fix something that I messed up. It was really cold yesterday, and um, I didn't wait for the cacao to thoroughly dry, so it gassed out on this as I was painting over it. I was too hasty. I'm trying to get these videos out as quickly as possible. But what happens is um, it causes it to ghost a little bit. You see that ghosting right there? That's from the lacquer underneath gassing out. So I, sh I should have waited a little bit longer before I put those bubbles on. What can you do? But that's okay. I'll just recover it right now. So we'll just go back, cover over this. It's thoroughly dry now. So we'll just get all those ghosted areas and bring them back to life. So just keep that in mind. In cold weather, it does take longer for the paint to dry. All right, let's go ahead and start cleaning up some of the black parts here. Now I did my, uh, my halo, or I'm sorry, my splash after I sketched in my 3D and I've kind of gone back and forth with the whole idea because back in the day, we always did our 3D first, did the splash and then cleaned it up, cleaned it up with an outer outer. I kind of went opposite recently and I started doing my splash then doing my 3D like that, but you know, I just don't know which way I like better. I think it's very much a personal preference thing. So try both ways, see what you like. I guess if you're doing a halo, it would be better to do the 3D first, just cause it's easier to find where to put your splash. Sometimes it can be kind of difficult, um, only because you put a bunch of work laying in a splash, then you realize your 3D isn't even hitting there and it just, you know, you just wasted the paint. So it's, it's got its drawbacks. Try it both ways, see what works for you. I don't think there's a right or wrong way. It's just whatever you wanna do. Wow. Guys, I gotta tell you, this Soviet is a gorgeous red. It hides and it covers very nicely. Here, check it out up close right here. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It's so clean in the valve. They've really improved the valve. All right, right now I'm putting in my 3D shines. I'm using Current in the Molotov Premium. This is an old can actually. It's been sitting for a few years and I was worried that it wouldn't function because sometimes when you have a half full can and you let it sit, it starts to clog up in the valve, but this one's working great. So we'll go ahead and start dropping in our 3D highlights here. This color in particular is fantastic. Highly recommend it. It's like a Lakers purple. In fact, one time, I did a rich guy's basketball court. Come back and fix that. He was a Lakers fan and I used this purple. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and start dropping in the shines. I got some, uh, what is this? The Signal White. Why can't I remember these things? Shock White. Shock White, Shock White, Shock White, Shock White. It's Shock White. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm gonna be doing my shines in Shock White, Montana Gold. Just pick a spot, any spot, and when you're doing your shines, always remember that you want your shine to be on the opposite side of your 3D. Because remember, think of it as a three-dimensional object. The light hits it from one side, the shadow is going to be on the other side. You feel me? So my shadow's going this way, so my shines need to be... <clears throat> Let me reiterate that. My shadow is going to the left. That means my shine needs to be on the right. Does that make sense? Now there are things in, in real life, this is a cartoon obviously, but in real life there is such thing as light spillover. So it's okay if you do a shine here and some of it spills over like that because light does do that. That's a normal thing. 
Don't go too far, obviously. Maybe just about that far if you're gonna do a little spillover shine. I like to do that, especially at the top parts of the letters. Just do a little spillover right there. Just creates a little bit more contrast. But whatever, you do you, you do whatever you want. All right, let's go ahead and start dropping the shines in. Oh, also I'm using the level one, the level one cap. I think it gives very crisp, clean lines. I think you'll like it. Whoop. All right, dope. I think it came out pretty nice. Good little flow there, nice color combos. I do really like that sublime mixed with the crazy green. It's a nice little combo there. Pretty happy with it. I'm glad we got a chance to try out a few different new techniques for you guys to see. You know, just to kind of ease you into interconnecting things, stretching letters, you know, just the basics. But uh, yeah, I feel pretty good about this. So why don't we go back to the warehouse and talk about the colors more in depth and uh, warm up with some hot cocoa or something. Smooth, just like these cans. Anyways, I had a lot of fun painting with these paints today and it was really great to see how they all interacted with each other, especially being forced to paint in the cold. You know, it's, it can be very difficult for aerosols to, to operate well in cold weather. Y'all who have been bombing in the winter know exactly what I'm talking about. But they all worked quite well, except for that little gassing issue I had, which is my fault. I'll take the blame for that one. But, uh, you know, got to keep the videos moving. Got to keep them moving. But, uh, you know, a couple thoughts. I, I still think Molotov and Montana Gold have the best valves. They, they do, hands down. Um, although the Iron Lack is a close second, it's got, it's, the Iron Lack has a softer feeling valve, but it has a lot of creep to it, which could be desirable for some people. Maybe you like that. I, you know, and again, this is purely subjective. Maybe I'm just used to the valves on these cans. It could be that. I don't know. Um, but I, it kind of goes into my brain as far as like shooting sports and stuff. Like if you're familiar with like trigger creep, you know, like or a long trigger pull, that's kind of how I feel with the Iron Lack cans. But I will tell you, the spring on the Iron Lack is much softer. It's really, really soft. So if you want a really soft spring, long creep, soft spring. If you, if you want a soft spring, definitely check them out. Because they are just delicate. Just very, very delicate. But, you know, these are things that are... These are hair-splitting things that don't matter all that much. Unless you're extremely... Unless you're on the spectrum like me. <laughs> But, you know, for, for the average, you know, beginning artist or intermediate artist, they're probably not going to notice the difference, you know. And um, so don't, don't let it sway your decision too much. But I like to, I like to split the hairs and talk a little bit in detail about it. Um, the, I will say this, the, the, uh, the color did admirably, and, and I'm going to be doing a full review on the color can soon. I think we need to do that. Um, also, we're going to be doing another character video coming up, and I will be announcing a new challenge when I do that. I'm actually going to do an homage, an homage to the world's greatest chef, Guy Fieri. <laughs> so that'll be, that'll be the upcoming character challenge. I was going to do it on this video, but I had so many people asking me, to do a piecing video. They're like, where are the piecing videos? Please do a piecing video. Too many reviews. Well, I got to do reviews, guys. Come on. But, um, you know, so the, the piecing video took precedence over the challenge. But I'll be gone next week for a bit, working on some projects. But when I come back, we will do the character challenge. And um, I, will, I will paint Sir Fieri with great passion. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Mech, or is it M-E-K crew? I don't know. It's, it's, it's a guy in Australia, so what's up Mech? I'm, I'm very happy to do your name. It was a lot of fun doing that. And uh, I want to give a big shout out to Australia as well in general. They are now my largest following outside of the U.S. They beat Canada. Canada used to be my largest following. But now Australia is my new best friend. <laughs> don't worry Canada, I still love you too. You always love your first love. <laughs> but who knows? The game never ends, right? The game never ends. But I just want to say, I just want to say what's up to all my homies in Australia. 
Thank you for giving me love. Thank you for being our largest follower now outside of the US. What happened, Germany? We used to be so close. <laughs> Anyways, what else do I want to chat about? Oh, 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 oh. The acetone cans. I've been using them in the past couple of videos, just cleaning my caps out, seeing how it works. And I gotta tell you, this stuff works pretty well. Now, I, I do know some people like to use the brake cleaner. You, you'll need to use the methylated stuff to really clean the paint out. But the problem is the, uh, the methyl chloride, it can be pretty gnarly. The acetone's not quite as bad for you. Still solvent, but uh, I'd take acetone over methyl chloride any day of the week. So these are really good for cleaning the caps. I've, uh, I've had a few that were pretty well clogged that it didn't push through. But what I did notice is if, if the cap is really clogged and you're, this one's already cleared, but if you're trying to get it to clear, if you just kind of scrape the front of it, get that little, that little hard piece off the front and then hit it, it usually busts right through and you got a clean cap ready to go. And so I've used this, this same level one cap on three or four pieces, bunch of characters, it still sprays like new. Mmm, aromatic solvents. I will say this, um, I'm, I'm thoroughly disappointed in the Walmart paint. You know, when, when I first started doing painting, I've gone through a few different phases, like when I first started painting in the early 90s, then I quit because I, I had some issues in my life and stopped painting. And I'll tell you one thing, that moment in my life I should have stayed painting because I would have been on a better path. Um, and then I started painting again, and, it's, it's, and then I had my accident, broke both my legs. It's a whole crazy story. But... What I'm getting to is I've used Walmart paint throughout the years. Also, I had a special opportunity to meet with the guy who invented the Color Place paint about six years ago and had a little talk with him. And he told me about how Walmart kept telling him to put more solvent in the can to, to lower costs. And he kept saying, no, this is gonna make the paint terrible. And they kept insisting on it. And eventually he gave up and went to go work somewhere else. But they have been doing that. And, and I can tell you from my personal experience that what is in this can is not what was in the can 10 years ago and is not in what was in the can 20 years ago. 20 years ago they had a magenta can that was like their pastel colors. They had like really cool teal, they had like a, a really nice like coral color, like all these really neat shades. Look up Color Place Magenta Can on Google and you'll see the old cans out there. They covered pretty darn good, like as good as the old Krylons did back then. We used to piece with them all the time. So Boo on you, Walmart, for continually diluting your paint. This is like transparent now. So if you want to dust your 3D, do an outline, do any type of transparent work, highly recommend it. But you know, you're gonna use four cans of this to do a fill nowadays. You can use one can of this. What else, what else? Oh, some kid asked me about the Boston caps because he said he was having trouble mounting them on a Molotov can. Good question. The Boston caps, like the New York outline, the Rusto Fat, the original German outline, and the Boston Thin, those caps all have a larger, thicker stem that is not compatible with the European spray paint. Now you could shave them down, do all kinds of tricks if you want, but there's so many other caps out there, it's, it's not really worth trying to do that to them. But just so you know, they don't properly mount on European paint. And I'll show you an example. I got a Boston cap right here. Let me, let me switch the camera position up a little bit closer so you can see me try to mount it on the can and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Like I said before, European paints have a much smaller uh, valve opening than what was on the old American cans. For example, this Molotov burner chrome can. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and mount this Boston fat and it just, it just won't go on. Here, let me try mounting it here. Let me see. All right, go on there, get on there. Oh! Nice to be with my real work. Oh man, is that all you wanna do? Let me go bombing trains at night. I'm pushing a broom all day. Man, why you get in my case? But what about tomorrow? Tomorrow's the 